Hello friends! For the past two weeks I've been trying out two different new firmwares, Beta Flight 4.0 and Helio with RF1. So today I'm gonna compare the two of them. I got 10 topics and I give them all a score from 1 to 10 on how they perform. So the 10 topics are tuning, consistency, prop wash, stick feel, default values, mid throttle oscillations, how they handled bent props, GUI, hardware compatibility, flight footage. I know that these two firmwares are not yet public releases, but I think they are kind of equal in their development stage, so I think it's fair to compare them. So let's start with Betaflight 4.0. I have been flying Betaflight for the past two years, always been a big fan of Betaflight and it always works good. It's like you can reach 95% of the performance really well, but you are always chasing the last 5%. So when it comes to tuning, you always gotta read up, you always gotta search for which CLI commands do you need to use and how to approach them to get the maximum performance out of your beta flight release. And it's 4.0, it's the same. I've been watching YouTube videos with UAV tech and drone mesh and I learned a lot from them and without their help I couldn't get it just as good as I could. So when it comes to tuning I give Beta Flight 6 points. It's still a lot of work and you still need to research and learn to get the maximum out of it. So 6 points I think is kind of fair in the terms of how easy it is with Beta Flight and tuning. And when it comes to consistency, what I mean is that if you build 10 quads, do you get 10 quads to perform good, well, without any issues? And this has always been the strong side of Betaflight, but now that I've built three quads with Betaflight 4.0, one flew really well, but two of them, I could never get them to fly well. I think it's cause on the one that was really good, it had BL Heli 32 and the ones that didn't fly well had BL Heli S. It might have something to do with it, but the consistency so far in Beta Flight 4.0 is not that well and I give it 5 points. When it comes to prop wash handling, some of the new things in Beta Flight 4.0 is the dynamic low pass filtering and it has really improved the handling. And when it Prop wash, it's, it's just not there. It's super good nowadays, so I give it eight points. Stick feel is something that Beta Flight has always been behind in. If you try Kiss, if you try Flight One, everyone says that the other firmwares has a tighter stick feel. And I haven't really noticed this in Beta Flight. I can't say that I haven't been happy with the stick feel, but you can see going from 3.5 to 4.0, it's a massive improvement. It feels so much tighter. It's really, really good. It has a bit of a soft feel to it, but it doesn't have necessarily mean that it's bad. It makes you fly a bit smoother. So stick feel, seven points. Default values. Default values works for most people on most quads and for the three quads I built with 4.0 the PIDs were kind of close. Uh, for all three quads the default values was undertuned and I guess undertuned is better than overtuned but I still had to change a lot of the filter settings to get it work nice so default values actually get five points just because the fact that filter settings is not as easy as PIDs so you need to know what you're doing. Five points for default values. And when it comes to mid-throttle oscillations, that has been the downside of all firmwares for the past one, two years. And as I said, two of three quads had massive mid-throttle oscillations. I didn't know what to do. I didn't know how to tune the filters. I lost all ideas how to proceed and get rid of them. So. One quad was really good and two was not good, so I have to give the points in the, in the middle range. So, five points in that section too. And when it comes to how they handle bent props, this is amazing. Nowadays you can just cartwheel your quad across the field and you almost 
you know, have your props 90 degrees bent, but it still flies, it still works really well, and it's not that bad, so I gave it bent props, eight points. When it comes to the GUI, it's the same old beta flat GUI. You still have to learn a lot of CLI commands. We all know what to do and what to click, and there's nothing new to it since the previous releases, and I like it. And once you learn what to fill with and what to not touch, it's, yeah, it's easy to work with, and, and, and I like it. It always, it's a nice one. So the GUI gave it seven points. Hardware compatibility. As we all know, it's an open source project. Betaflight is awesome. You can buy your flight controllers basically anywhere. For You can buy cheap ones, you can buy expensive ones. So, 10 points in this section. And as a freestyle pilot, the next topic is flight footage. For the quad that got to work really well in 4.0, it looks really good. And that's the one you see in this video. And for the other two, not as good as I would hope for. I think nowadays the 4.0 looks a bit like KISS did one, two years ago when I last used it. So I give it seven points. Helio is a new board to me. I recently bought three of them, set up three quads just to learn and to see what it's all about. And I've been out for a few tuning sessions and one thing that amazed me is that it's so easy to tune. I haven't been needing to touch the filter settings at all. It just, it's so good that I changed it a bit to see if it's had a major impact on performance but it seems like the values you get from default is just as good as anything so and i tuned the pids a bit to get it to my liking and tuning default it's, it's super good i gave it nine points it's easy to tune and it works just as i want to and when it comes to consistency i think they found something here something really good because on the three quads i set up all of them were like perfect right away and they flew identical. There was no difference between them. I have never seen such a consistency in any firmware. I'm, I'm super impressed by this. So nine points in that topic too. And when it comes to prop wash handling, there is a bit of prop wash that I, I seem to not be able to tune out. It's, it's so much better than anything we had a year ago, a half year ago. And it's may not the topic where the Helio with RF1 shines the most, but it's, it's like, it's not bad, but it's not the most impressive either. So I gave it seven points. Stick feel, wow, th this is so amazing. I never feel, felt so connected to the quad as I've done with Helio with RF1 on the three ones I built. It's like, it's another level of connection. I can't really explain it because it's not the rates, it's just like it's instant reactions to what you do with the sticks. It happens to the quad and you see it in the goggles. It's like, I don't race anymore, I don't fly gates, but I can imagine that if you fly this setup on gates, it must be like what you really wish for in a racing setup because it's, cause it's so connected. I give this eight points because I can't see how it could be improved. Next topic default values and to be honest I've been tuning quads for the past four years and I have never seen default values have been as good as these ones uh, uh, my jaw is dropped to the floor for the three quads I built default values were 99 perfect on all three quads and they have kind of different setups they are overpowered and they are heavy and they are often hard to tune but the default values it was like perfect on all three I just changed the P a bit on all of them and like one of the quads I went home after a tuning session with default values being happy with it that never happened before so 10 points on default values mid throttle oscillations are the three quads I built none of them had any mid throttle oscillations at all it, it might be a slightly when I had a bent prop, but the best I ever seen when it comes to mid throttle oscillation, so nine points out of that. 
and how it handled bent props. I, I cartwheeled, I crashed, I smashed it and uh, I, I kept on flying with bad props and of course it got a bit worse. I had some oscillations and vibrations but it's still really good, it's not bad, so I give it 7 points. And the GUI, the Pegasus is a new one, uh, it's easy to use, it's easy to understand what to click. Uh, it was not easy at all to get it to working on my Mac computer. On the PC it was just a install, start using it, but on the Mac it was a lot of work. So I have to give it only six points. I know that they will improve this and it's not ready yet, but as it is today, I can only give it six points. Hardware compatibility. We all know that RF1 and the butterfly only works on Helio, so the most logical thing would, for me would be to give it just one point. But the board itself got a good value. It's not super expensive and it's well thought out. The layout is good and uh, it's a really good flight controller. So even though the compatibility is not good, the board itself is really good. So I gotta give it five points for that. Flight footage. For the first time in two years, I enjoy watching my own footage. It looks just as I want it to look like, and I'm eager to go out flying. Now it's winter in gray, cloudy, and the, it's, the weather is all bad, so you can't get any good footage. But I'm excited to go out fly because I know that I can trust the quads and I can. it looks the way I want it to. So eight points on how the flight footage looks. That's Helio with RF1.